Is it worth buying a property with a short lease? Now, short lease properties typically, in the view of most mortgage lenders, are properties with less than 80 years remaining on the lease. Now, in that case, you'll find mortgage lenders typically do not want to finance those properties. So even if you're buying the property cash through private finance, bridging, or your own savings, whatever it may be, you'll find that's okay. But when you come to sell it, there might be a problem for your buyer, and that can be a big issue. So make sure that you have done your due diligence if you're looking at short lease properties, because there is opportunity. Because bear in mind, if it has to be bought cash, you've just lost an awful lot of your competition. If it can't be bought without a mortgage, a lot less people will be able to get into that deal. So you're competing with people that can only buy cash and therefore there's less competition. So there's opportunity there to make money. So if you're doing what I'm doing, which is buying and renovating and selling on, renting out properties, there is an opportunity there to look at short lease properties. But there's a word of caution here I've got to give you. You've got to make sure you know what you're doing because it can end up costing you a lot of money and costing you a lot of wasted time if you don't. So when it comes to a leasehold property, if it's got a short lease on it and it can't be mortgaged, one simple solution is to extend the lease, which is often fairly easy to do, but not always. So make sure you look into this in advance before you buy. You can extend that lease and that can make that property mortgageable. But in some cases, properties that are leasehold can actually be not worth the lease being extended. So what do I mean by that? In particular, leasehold houses, which you may never have heard of leasehold houses, depending where you live in the country. Now, I'm in the northeast, so there's quite a few leasehold houses up here. So I'm very familiar with them. But what you might find is leasehold houses, buyers in the area want to have the freehold. So you can spend a bunch of money extending the lease if you want, but the reality is to give that property the most amount of value in some cases, in some areas, they'd much rather have the freehold. So in order to be able to purchase that freehold, you might have to wait to own that property for at least two years before you can even apply to get it. So put that in perspective. If like me, you're doing properties, renovating them, selling them on, and ideally looking to get that project finished from start to to key, you know, from the point of getting your keys in the hand, doing the work on the property to then cash in the bank on sale, you're looking at six months there or thereabouts in an ideal world. Then having to wait two years to even apply for a freehold is bad news. It is not good for business and it lowers your return on investment to the point where it falls off a cliff if you're not careful. So it's really not worth doing that. So there's a workaround in some cases. What you can do is you can get the seller to give you the right to assign that purchase of the freehold. So if they've owned the property for two years, they could actually give you that, that right to assign so you can purchase the property with the freehold without having to wait two years to do it. So there is a way in some cases. Now, I would not recommend ever touching any deal like this without involving a solicitor who knows what they're doing, who's got experience doing this, because you want to make damn sure in advance that you're going to be able to get that freehold not have to wait two years. The difference on your return on investment is massive. It's not worth doing if you're going to have to hold that property for two years in the vast majority of cases. So make sure that you've done your due diligence. You know what you're doing in advance. So you're speaking to a solicitor and engaging the seller, having conversations before you even put your offer forward to see if there's a workaround. Now, if you can get that workaround, not everyone knows about this workaround, by the way, you can be in a really strong position to get a deal where other people are put off because of the length of time they have to wait to purchase that freehold. So that's a quick workaround. Get the right to assign, and that can enable you to purchase that property with the freehold and then get it sold as soon as the works are finished. That's not always a workable solution. So bear in mind, especially if you're looking at property auction and there is a deadline for the auction date of the property, then it might not be possible to have everything done and dusted up front before you buy that property or before you put your bid in to buy that property at auction. So ideally in that situation, if you can't engage the seller to sell outside of auction terms, then you probably don't want to be bidding until you've got absolutely everything sorted. In fact, you definitely don't want to be bidding until you've got everything sorted so you know what is going to be involved and, and ultimately that you can get that freehold without waiting two years. 
And most importantly, in any scenario, you need to be absolutely sure that you know the costs in advance. Because what you might find it might surprise you, but the cost of buying a freehold or even extending a lease can be incredibly expensive. So much so that if you're looking at a deal, it could wipe out all of your profit if you don't know the numbers in advance. So make sure that you're speaking to your solicitor and you're finding out that figure in advance. What is it going to cost to go to lease extension or purchase a freehold? What's it going to cost in advance? If you don't know that, stay well clear. If there's no clear answers, I would stay well clear. This isn't always an easy process. You can come up with freeholders who are difficult, potentially could take ages. And so this is something you want to be speaking to a solicitor in advance. You want to see some paperwork. You want to see some actual clarity, knowing that you'll be able to purchase this. Otherwise, it's just not worth the risk, arguably. And it won't be able to be done in all cases. So to go back to my auction example, if you're bidding at auction and that lease is short and you put your bid in, that's tough, right? You're buying that property with the short lease. And then you will typically, in some cases, if you've not done your due diligence in advance, you might struggle to be able to find a workable solution in a reasonable time. So make sure in advance, you know your cost. What's it going to cost for the freehold or the lease? You know what in your area people are going to want. Is it a longer lease or would they really just want the freehold? So you know what you're going to be buying. Obviously, you've got to be clear in advance on the costs and you understand the time it will take for you to find that solution. And if you can do that with confidence and clarity and your solicitors informed and they know what they're doing, then buying short lease properties can be a way of making big profits. Because as you can imagine, there's less competition, there's less people that have the workarounds or solutions that can actually make this strategy work. But if you can find a solution, there can be big profits for you because you've solved a problem. And property is often about solving a problem and maximizing your profit as a result of doing that. So that's one thing to think about. Short leases, yes, you can do it, but you've got to be very cautious. You've got to know your stuff in advance and you've got to be sure that you're not committed to buy the damn thing without a workable solution. So hopefully you found this video useful in some way. If you have, go ahead, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and you'll see me in the next one very soon.